Chapter 6. A ring! Hello? Hello, Susan. It's me, Alex. I've been having great fun giving our literature out for free. I've got a cell phone so you can call me at any time. That's great, Alex. We're so glad you called. Henry has finished the last trumpet alarm and he wants you to come back and get them to distribute. We are almost finished getting the ones ready to mail out. I'm on my way. Pilgrimage's Last Trumpet Alarm Year of Recompenses by Henry Robinson There is a time coming that goes by different names like Great Tribulation, Day of God's Wrath, and Year of Recompenses. Needless to say, no one should want to have to go through this period of history. Yet the Bible clearly states there will be a few that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus states this clearly in Matthew seven thirteen to 14 Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And in Revelation 19.9 it says, And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. In Isaiah 34.8 we find the following, for it, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And in verse 5, we find out why there is a controversy. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Indomia, and upon the people of my curse, to judgment. Some of the modern descendants of Indomia are the Jews in the Holy Land. The Lord is upset with them because they have duped his true chosen people into believing that they, the Jews, and his cho are his chosen people, when they in fact come from Esau, not Jacob. Their claim to the Holy Land is false, for it really belongs to the true descendants of Israel found in the Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, and kindred peoples of Great Britain and the United States. The people of his curse who have come to judgment are his true chosen people who have refused to believe who they are and in so doing have placed themselves on the curse side of the if and but clauses of Deuteronomy 28 of which we will only quote a part. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. It then lists the curses that would come upon his disobedient people, which include birth defects, pestilences, and all diseases imaginable. These curses and many more will, would increase to gigantic proportions until his people become willing to carry out the oath that their forefathers made at Mount Sinai. All that the Lord has spoken we will do. Exodus 19.8 Therefore, because of modern-day Israel's refusal to obey God's laws as the law of their lands, he will have no choice but to pass judgment upon them until they repent and be converted, for he states in Ezekiel 20, 37-38, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. What can those left behind expect to endure during the chastising period when God will make them pass under the rod? In Revelation sixteen eighteen to 21 it says, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great, 
And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague was exceedingly great. Could this hail come from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter? One thing is for sure, that when God throws out this arsenal upon men, he will not miss the mark. But is there any indication in Scripture that there are those who will be even spared from this great plague of hail? Isaiah 26, 20-21 seems to indicate there will be. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. However, it only stands to reason that those to be spared will only be those who have truly repented and allowed the Lord to write his laws upon their hearts and minds, as Hebrews 10.16 states. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Another event those who get left behind will have to face is the complete destruction of the economic system under which we are now living. In Revelation 18, it is called Babylon the Great, and in verses 21 it states, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. With the destruction of our economy, people will be in total chaos. Greed will run rampant in the streets because people will be in fear that things will only get worse and worse with no hope in sight. However, this is another testing time. Those who heed God in his righteous ways will be satisfied, but only those who have truly repented. God knows the heart, and no one can fool him. He's not interested in feigned love, but will only listen to those who sincerely repent of their sin and allow him to convert their souls in the way of righteousness. The thing to keep in mind the most is that evil men during this time will try to fool you into believing the Lord Jesus is not coming back to rule and reign over his kingdom that was established at Mount Sinai so long ago. These evil men will try to set up their own system that is contrary to God's. Don't do what they say even when they tell you you can't buy or sell anything without complying with their wishes. There has been much speculation as to what the mark of the beast is that is found in Revelation 16.2 and 19.20. Since it is highly unlikely that there will be any functional computer systems during this year of recompenses, the microchips which are just beginning to be used in companies as a way to keep track of their employees will be non-functional. Therefore, I suspect that this mark will be in the form of a tattoo placed either on the hand or forehead. The law makes it plain that tattooing is forbidden in Leviticus 19.28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. So if I'm correct that tattooing is what will be required at that time, then make sure that under no circumstances you comply, for that receiving of the mark will say to the Lord, you do not believe in what his word says in Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you stay firm and not waver, then you will be numbered with those in Revelation 7.14.
These are they which came out of great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb.